If she can lip read, I'm screwed. Flash to the past 76 CE, Rome was descending into anarchy. Their armies were taxed, they couldn't relax. It was the final fruit of heading and spreading to the max. Keep retreating, stop bleeding, the barbarians hit. Roman split right down the middle, and the ages found themselves to be in the same place. Time was of the essence, survival was erased. They found a fast fix. Surface in their manners, and the newfound Catholic Church was teaching people their manners. They had an agreement, surface got food and rent. In exchange, the lords didn't spend a damn cent. History was lost on with forms of art. Finishing some wars they couldn't afford to start. The mechanism was designed to bring about stability. It was inevitability that the scholars ability that revolution would bring about rebirth fast This time of lacking would finally be long past No more seeing in 2D of lacking reality Finding heaven and death, we ain't carefree And finally, due to several contributions The time was right for a modern revolution So the mindset of the people changed The landscape of Europe rearranged And the impact expanded The world was branded with new ideas And was never the same The Renaissance was a rebirth of the known, so influential it even took the Pope off the throne. By such ideas as secularism, where men finally felt free, not shackled by their middle age beliefs and religious plea. But that wasn't the only change in idea toward the Pope. Skepticism showed up and made men question their hope towards heaven, I mean, and if it's just a lie or a scheme concocted by the church to make them work or even worse a mindset called humanism decided to arrive it focused on humanity and all the thoughts archived it made them proud of themselves and made them feel alive it made humanity set many goals for which it strived another great idea called individualism arose kind of a copy of humanism but smaller i suppose it focused on the individual and made them proud to be but another man wasn't, and how they came to be. All these ideas together made the ideal renaissance man, a smart, young, inventive thing who always had a plan. But how do these crazy, far-fetched ideas come to be? Why well, there's a couple answers to such a simple question, you see. To start, there was a printing press made by your boy, Guten. It produced books for illiterate masses and taught them how to read them. But what book was produced? Oh, that's right, the Bible. Now common and interpreted by anyone, it seemed tribal, which led to all the questioning of the grand old church, and almost made the holy pope fall off his grand old perch. But this wasn't only a happy time full of fun and games, for a certain bacteria was kicking butt and taking names. Oh, that's right, the Black Death, its kill count brought it fame. Higher than your Fortnite KDA, despite your claim, it killed a third of Europe and only meant to maim. But what's the importance? That it made Europe insane. Kind of? It made people question the grand old church. My god, would let such a thing loose to torch. In conclusion, the renaissance was a rebirth, not of the people, or even of the earth, but of the ideas spread by those people, and the influence it had towards the steeple. And that's all you need to know for this period of time, so we pass the mic to my buddy so we can lay down the rhyme. So the mindset of the people changed, the landscape of Europe rearranged, the impact expanded, the world was branded with new ideas and was never the same. There were a lot of greedy people that enslaved all their African peoples. Man to man, strong African tribes took prisoners of war and traded them for more. Slaves taken from Africa had no aid and they were the start of the triangular trade. They were brought to the Marquesas, Brazil, and the Caribbean. During this journey, they were fed very little rations and misused by their captors in all different fashions. Kept in species, they were considered different species, treated worse than animals, even cannibals. They were put in implantations, indentured for life, living in strife. Some slaves died and some tried to run. Despite their best efforts, all the healthy ones were traded for rum. The traders took them to Europe, places like England. The goods were sold for all that money. It would be cruel to make this part of the rap fun and for all the lives that were lost. It's one of humanity's greatest costs. Africa lost its culture, and the Europeans and Americans became like vultures by picking off chunks of meat from the weak, an event that shouldn't have even lasted for a week. However, through empathy, the Europeans finally learned their lesson, and many took this as a blessing, but the Americans were still aggressive, taking in more slaves than ever before. They were falling for the horror of cupidity, and looking back on it, their actions were filled with stupidity, and while it took a changing and a new presidency to change the minds of society, it finally happened, and now African Americans are a blessing. Before this, it was an age of explorers, dominated by the Spanish and the Portuguese to discover out all these new lands as if they were bees. People became famous for their discoveries, shout out my boy Prince Henry the Navigator for being a forefront of discovering all these new properties. Divided 
by the Treaty of Tordillas. They started to make inquiries about the new land, always tried to gain the upper hand. They soon learned about this group named the Aztecs, a powerful society whose system was quite complex. Filled with riches, it brought the attention of Cortez, who, aided by disease, guns, and steel, ate up the armies of the natives like a nice meal. A similar situation happened further down south with the Incas, another society with wealth, and their eventual undoing would be stealth. Pizarro, another Spanish explorer, set out to conquer the nation. Reading about Cortez's adventure, he could see himself in that situation. So with a similar tactic of secrecy, he attacked the nation by surprise, ensuring the riches he would need to become a member of aristocracy. Many explorers weren't so bad, but sadly they weren't part of the money-making fad, so their name will never go down in sheer fame. And so the mindset of the people changed, the landscape of Europe rearranged, and the impact expanded, the world was branded with new ideas and was never the same. Let me lay down the legs to a funny little story about how one man, other plans and glory, glided upon one time, one place, European reformation began at pace. Funk named Fetzel, got a little fritzy, stole indulgences, making things risky, so Martin Luther Ball strayed up to the church, whipped out his paper, preached against that merch, and wrote not one, not two, not three. But 95 old thesis so the people of our species could understand the reason that the church needed a PC. He spoke against those fools and all the rules he wanted to change. And the German nobles gained political exchange. Preached equality and got the peasants all squabbling until he brushed them off the sleeve and left them all hobbling. He said, slow down, don't take it too far. All I wonder was the church free of human mar. Three man ideas patching up the Christian take. Laid him out so well he made him hard to mistake. Say goodbye to good works, only in faith salvation. Every single man can plan his own interpretation. Hierarchy of church doesn't need no allocation. It's a shame that fame led to excommunication. Button with his footsteps, another man rose. Took the original and added some notes. Religion was hurting, it needed a salve, and as from spread its head said Calvin, changed the game, added some effects, predetermination would determine his elect, he got Europe hype and they copied his manner, they elected him in Geneva, he put down the hammer, banning the music, the gaming, the dances, go to bed without getting your neighbor's pants, the style that he ruled influenced democracy, other nations learning from Calvinist theocracy, work ethic of his boys founded use of interest, capital thinking, money before us, but the unrest of this reform is formed a new accord, and Europe found itself in an all out religious war, every side fighting for the freedom to believe, and up making all those evil non-believers flee, splitting up Europe and staying new nations, too about half the state was now living on rations. People were leaving across the Atlantic as baby-faced rulers were getting real frantic. As the sun rose on that bright war same day, Calvin and Luther had come out to play. Europe was looking split and covered in the blood of its people and a new form of government and so the mindset of the people changed. The landscape of Europe rearranged and the impact expanded. The world was branded with new ideas and was never the same. Delayed from the Renaissance, the difference between Europe and Russia was more than a nuance. Ran by the warriors, the icy land snowballs, it was mostly filled with snowballs. Till Ivan came by claiming Tsar, he shook up the game. A ruler who killed off those with power and replaced him with people loyal to him in what seemed like an hour. Nicknamed the Ivan the Terrible, he was not one to mess with. Killing a strong in a fit of rage jeopardized the developing golden age. After he passed, Russia fell into chaos, bringing in years of wars and loss, only to be claimed by a big baller boss named Peter the Great, while his rule was almost too late. With innovative ideas like a warm water port and a strong army, he achieved his main goal of westernizing his country, which eventually pushed Russia into one of the most successful entities in the last few centuries. Meanwhile in England, its greatness all started with the Tudors, whose worth ethic was comparable to computers. Starting out with King Henry VII, I'm sure his royal taste was that of a pheasant, or maybe that was his son, but which one, you might ask. Starting off with Arthur, the most fit to rule, if only he had better medicine, he might have lived. The only heir left was our boy Henry VIII, whose wives would have a disastrous fate. It first started off when he married Arthur's wife, who married him before she knew about his wild life. Eventually divorced, she was one of the lucky few and who didn't end up in the ground, saving some tissues. While Henry was an idiot, he created a new church. He no longer had to search for some wealth, and with his bad habits and declining health, he soon died. So a new royal popped up, a strong queen named Elizabeth, whose slate was entirely clean. She changed England forever, surging to a nation with power. They had arguments with the Spanish that were taken to the seas, and because they were quite lucky, a storm hit the Spanish fleet. Spanish sent them overboard, and the English were now the supreme navy. Since Elizabeth had no heir, who would rule went all up into air. The Stuarts took the throne and tried to rule like the Chancellor of Rome. But during the time of Elizabeth, a group named Parliament started taking power, and this force that could not be stopped try started making the king crazy. So he took an army from the north and attacked his own land who was defeated and killed by Parliament's own hands. This led to a guy named Charles II who created habeas corpus, a law with purpose, to help all of his subjects by declaring that they had rights about imprisonment, and when he was replaced by the bad king, they would def 
defeated him without bloodshed, a turning point for the minds of society. A different story happened in France. Nowadays, it's known for its castles and art. It used to be as ugly as mall cop Mr. Blart. This all changed with a man named Louis the Sun King, who changed a warring kingdom into the style of a wedding ring. It all started with this neat guy, King Henry of Navarre, whose political Carl thing was much lower than par. By creating the idea of religious tolerance, he wiped out all the intelligence in his society, which led to men like Carnot Richelieu, whose two main goals as France's supremacy were to make France and its king the strongest entities. In turn, help, this helped add to Mazarin's legitimacy so he could get rid of all those pesky nobles, allowing him to voice his proposals to make jobs not a royal family right and act anything but polite. Yet it was the light that Louis needed. When he came to power, the foundations were already seated. No one could stop him. His word was final. He could kill you over anything, even libel. With the help of a man named Colbert, he was able to keep France as fierce as a bear by keeping their economics wealthy and healthy when this man named John passed. France surely wasn't gonna last. Famous for the quote, after me the flood, Louis wasn't wrong, and his family would be the ones paying him blood. The throng was too powerful, stopped, and they killed all the royal family. And so the mindset of the people changed, the landscape of Europe rearranged, and the impact expanded, the world was branded, and with new ideas it was never the same. The Enlightenment, or should I call it, the Renaissance Part 2. Basically the same thing, but varying with the who, it brought a new mindset set on education caused by those explorers returning from vacation with new ideas and philosophies, the knowledge of biology all growing due to prophecy. I won't make this hard to see a new class of intellectuals meeting for their rituals. No, it's not sexual, it's simply conceptual. Their ideas shared through clubs, no longer thinking about floods, no longer hiding from their god, instead thinking about the future the end goal a computer or at least to make innovations was a period of updations to what had been before but now those scraps are on the flow making room for something new testers inventors research crews all making it to the news mentions of this time brought you rip the head it's almost hard to rhyme about how far they went this rap better not have been a bust please give us an a plus that's just gonna be super screwed up so we should just like be close to ourselves. Gone gay! Gone gay!